Welcome back to Nicklandia's Comic Corner Classics, that's known classics. This is episode number 1256. <coughs> Excuse me. And double shot number 1149, I think it is. Um... No, it's a 1255, excuse me, and 1149. Sorry about that. Alright. Basically, I'm discussing two Deadpool trades. This is from the fourth and fifth volumes of the run collected by Gary Duggan. First up, it is Deadpool vs. Shield. Though, for some reason, the app listed it as Monkey Business. I don't know why it's weird. Yes, this book contains issues 20 to 25. Of course, written by Gary Duggan and Brian Potion, art by Scott Kublis, this issue 20, and Mike Hawthorne, this issue 21 25. The cover art for issue 20 is by Tom Sullivan and Val Stables, with the colorist on here. We have Mark Brooks doing the rest of the artwork. Now, simply put, this story, this arc here, with the exception of the flashback stuff that deals with the whole flashback stuff, the main story of Deadpool vs. S.H.I.E.L.D. is that pretty much it wraps up a recurring plot thread in Deadpool that's been going since the first story arc of the run, where De apparently there is this corrupt... Now, the, one of the plot threads in, uh, of this run at this point in time was that we had Agent Preston, that was the LMD who showed up in the last trip. I forgot to mention that, that was her name, Preston. Because it's been a while since I've seen the character. The character very rarely shows up nowadays. Yeah. So, basically, Deadpool wants to get out of her head. So, they try this and they do a mind transfer thing. And this is where... And also this arc, this is where Deadpool meets Phil Coulson for the first time. Which comes to play later on in Deadpool Biannual, believe it or not. Yep. Plays into that particular book. But also this book... Uh, no, the annual's not here. It's the next book. Mm -hmm. So... Why is Deadpool fighting S.H.I.E.L.D.? Because it's a corrupt S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who wants to kill Deadpool because of reasons. Also, again, Juice is Scott Astit here. Yes, Scott Astit. Yeah, he, he was basically a recurring character in Gary Duggan's run for Deadpool. And around issue 30 of the next flying for the series, he decided to quit S.H.I.E.L.D. and transfer to the Nova Corps. Take away from Deadpool, but you follow him anyways. A lot of the times Scott asked it usually is written by Gary Duggan. The only times I can think of it was written by him was when he showed up in the Champions and when he showed up in Champions Volume 3. And that's it. Because most of the time, Gary Duggan's the one been writing him. And he usually is depicted as a very good character. It seems as though that when Gary Duggan writes him, he's a pretty decent person. Not in the case of other people writing him, they write him as a complete jerk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the storyline, basically, Deadpool takes down a helicarrier because they're fighting him. So he had the... Yeah, and also, in case you're curious, though, like, oh, wait, is that Lala? The, the car Lala from the Agent Show TV show? Yes! Yes, it is. Yeah. Phil Coulson owns this car. I'm like, yeah, just like in the show, this is actually his car. And yes, like in the show, it can freaking fly. Oh yes, it can fly. Which, it's so good the fact that they have this car in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on behalf of the store, and Phil Coulson shows up, that's why he meets Deadpool for the first time. Yeah, one thing I've heard about him is that, oh, Phil Coulson interacts only, only mainly only with Deadpool. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not true. Because he's also interacted with Thor. Yep. This storyline is just pure fun. So, this corrupt agent puts a hit out on Deadpool. So, like, it seems like a lot of, like, big-name villains will have to, like, Crossbones, Backdrop the Leaper, the Trapster. I'm trying to think. Who else was it went after him? It was, like, a lot of villains that decided to go after him. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, we also had frickin' Sabretooth. I think, yeah, we had the Paladin, Batrock, Trapster, Sabretooth, Crossbone decided to chip along because, well, he wanted to. We have Deadpool interrupting uh, a, a new a newlywed couple. And at the end of issue 21, Phil Coulson shows up. Yep, 
Phil Coulson. And here's the thing about this character that I've got to mention. This character is by far the first ever character to be introduced in the movies first, then in the comic book. So, unlike other characters, if a character is just like they're on live action, people actually are mad at the artist for doing that. This character, Phil Coulson, who looks exactly like that, not exactly here, per se, they do a little bit later, later on, he looks like Clark Gregg. He is one character that I think a lot of people can accept being drawn like the way he is in movies because he did movies first and then he appeared in the comic book. Yep. But by the way, his first appearance was a miniseries called Bow Scars, which came out two years prior to the events of the story. Yep. Also, gotta love these Mark Book covers. They're so freaking good. Yep. Where it seems like, though, he was clearly trying to homage something. I'm not sure what this one's supposed to be homage to with a salute. And. So I think this is Preston. Nope, it's not Preston. So Sky has to use a freaking jetpack. Remember when Shield Agents had these things? Yes, jetpacks. And they fight the Preston robot and they fight the rest of the course. The cops like, what the heck is going on here? And they don't know what's a robot, so the guy's like, hmm. So Yep, and then Power that starts to go after him. Like all the villains show up like before, all after this is where Deadpool meets Phil Coulson for the first time. Where he's like, and this is such a hilarious line when he meets him. Where is it? He's like, who's that guy? Nick Fury's accountant? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Such a hilarious line. And I'm not sure who wrote it. It was Brian Pierce or Gary Duggan. I think it was Gary Duggan who wrote that. That was so hilarious. And this is the first time Dippo meets Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson's awesome. I like the way Jason Aaron's writing him in in Avengers where he apparently hates superheroes. Also, he burned his cat and murdered trading cards. I'm not kidding about this. Seriously, did. Oh, yeah. And also, I gotta show this off. Yeah, Deadpool I collect a Xenomorph. I'm like, why in the world would Mark Books rip off the freaking Alien movies with this cover? Yeah, it turns out the corrupt agent was actually an agent of Ultimatum. You're probably thinking, who the heck is Ultimatum? A terrorist agency in Marvel Comic Books. They're not that widely known. I mean, we think of terrorist agents in Marvel Comic Books. What's the first part? What's the usually the first names you think of? Hydra, AIM. That's it. Or probably the Hand. Yeah, think of those groups. Baltimore? No, not really. Led by fucking Flag Smasher. Yes, the guy called Flag Smasher. And these guys first made appearance in a Captain America comic of all things. Yeah, these guys are Captain America villains. Deadpool's fighting just cause because Captain America doesn't want to do, do, do with these guys right now. Yep. So, well, there's one thing about these guys we got. So, basically, a president of a new body, and of course, just one the mind of Deadpool. Where we kind of in a way tease stuff for later. Yeah, we have this wonderful image of basically the good, bad, and ugly. And we also have this really weird thing. Oh, yeah, also Necromancer is up here as well, and so is Ben Franklin. Yeah, he's been a recurring character in the book. Yeah, then we have something that teases something later. We didn't have, of all people, Zen Paul shows up. He probably thinking, wait, Zen Paul doesn't show up until the original Sin time. What the hell is he doing here? Gary Duggan teasing a future storyline. Actually, it was a riddle. This was actually access he was teasing. Yep. Teasing the access story. So, yep. They have a brawl between Deadpool and Crossbones, which caused Grab Crossbones all his clothes except for his gloves, boots, and tidy whities Yeah. Crossbones were tidy whities And then they take the correct shield agent, who was actually Agent Ultimatum, throw him in the garbage truck, and they kill him. Yep. And they fight some more. And. Crossbones can't feel his face. He gets arrested. He gets some money. And Deadpool goes to the airport in Europe. And then we have the end of the thing, basically, where we have this. We have a vampire biting a woman. Who is this vampire? Dracula! No joke. Dracula. What is the point of this ending? Well... The ending of it sets up Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet, which I had previously reviewed. That's what that ending was. It sets up that particular 
uh, Digital First, which was really printed as a one-shot. And then we come to Volume 5, The Wedding of Deadpool. Yes, and... Oh, in case you're curious, though. Uh, no, Deadpool's Wedding, basically, yeah, it does happen here. But here's something interesting about it. The fact that, well, how should I put this? It's not widely attended. Not really, no. Yep. Now, basically, Mike Hawthorne's still the artist. With um, This book mainly can just contain just very few issues. If this book contains issues number, I think it was like 27, 26, 28, and the Deadpool annual. Yes. We have the annual, which is written by Ben Acker and Ben Bleeker, with all work by Evan Doc Steiner. The actual individual issue is Mike Hawthorne, issue 27, which is the wedding issue. And Scott Kubelich is issue 26, 28. And by the way, 27 is simply like a double size issue. That's the reason why this is like this. Mm hmm. Yep, and then we have this two-page thing of of uh, Deadpool 27 list of, like, yeah. This this cover, when it came out, it had the record of the most characters on a cover. They did it, they, they tried to do this later on when they had the least amount of characters on the cover with a cover that came a little bit later. Why is that with my freaking camera? So... Deadpool. Yeah, whenever this thing finally finishes up here, come on. So yeah, Deadpool, of course, well, has a shootout with Ultimatum because he's still fighting him at the Museum of Natural History with the T Rex. So we have Preston Astley basically just fight alongside him, and they get a limo service where oh yeah. And then the car gets blown up. And then we have this funny scene of, yeah, who dares attack Scala, Queen of the Underworld? It was those guys in pointy hats, dear. Anyway, where were we? What were we talking about? Why her? And and Aston's like, oh god, monster. He's like, hey, watch out. And then, of course, Scala basically beats the crap out of him. And apparently, like, oh, it's like, oh god, monster. Agent Preston, I'm so glad to meet you. Excuse me, thank you for everything. He done for the husband, my husband. He tells me you saved him. I was only doing the favor. <laughs> He's like, oh, hi, babe. Hi, also. You may find my weaker form more pleasing to your eyes. Yes, tequila is hot. Yep. Oh, and by the way, Deadpool tries to grab her butt. <laughs> Though he gets more of that later on. Don't worry about that. So, he's engaging in Mary. Of course, they fight some monsters. He can use some monster Metropolis, which is great. They'll get used to here. And then, of course, he goes find a priest. Like He goes to various people to be the ministers. Like, first go Doctor Strange, then Cap, then Wolverine. And then Nightcrawler's like, hey, you want to get married? You want to marry somebody? Sure. Yep, and Deadpool, pretty much. And we have this wonderful image of basically a spoof of the classic Beals cover of the walking across the, the the crosswalk, the four people, which I thought was so cool. And Ass is like, where's this blind now? And she goes to a very different place. A funeral. I was like, what? <laughs> yep. Hey, you have Sakila not wear a treasure wedding dress. Nope, she wears a red dress. And of course, Bob H. Hydra is here. Watch the Watchers here, along with Squirrel Girl. Uh, looks like Daredevil's here, along with. I'm not sure who this redhead is. I know She Hulk is apparently here. And then, of course, it rains. But look how it's stopped by freaking Thor, who back, who's back in the JMS off, which is so cool. Yep. And of course, when he goes out without a problem, Deadpool and Sakila make out. And it goes, everybody, party, 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 party. <laughs> Storm is here in her in her Mohawk look. Yes, you got to thank Jason Aaron for that. Yep, he's the one who had that happen. Yeah, and I think there's a Wolverine and the X-Men because, well, her marriage to the Black Panther had to end for some stupid reason. I'm not really sure why that was. It's kind of weird. Well, now it finally moves. Yep. 
and the thing and the story ends basically like happily ever after. And the next issue is basically them like going on a honeymoon to Tokyo. We show a flag match like time to kill Deadpool. Yep. And then we have these like bunch of like short stories. We have Operation Ballerina Day, which is the Gary Duncan Scott Kublish. With this hand ID wed, that's a baby Z is Scott Hepburn. Hepburn. Now it keeps you curious for this big issue. Does Rob Liefeld chip in for this? Nope, he doesn't. At all. I'm like, really? He's a co creator of Deadpool. Yeah, you include Fabian C's on this, which is great. But not Liefeld? Really? Yeah, as far as I can tell, there's no reason why. We have. Well, we have Niagara Bride, which is a story by Joe Kelly. He was the original writer of the Deadpool Long Wizard of the 90s, with Pac Winnie in the artwork. Quickie by the Austin awesome Roman. This is actually the only writer here, one or two writers here on this page I've actually met. And I'll work by John Timms. Trilogy for 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 Winky by Gail Simone, and uh, and I'll work by Abba Lee. Savage Land, the other Niagara Falls. Victor Gushler, who is known for doing X Men Volume Three, the first like, basically when it was a team of book, and Bong Dusher does the artwork for that one. We have a swearing faced in Vegas, done by Brian Pushin, the other writer of Deadpool currently, at, well for this book anyways, and Scott Kubler in the artwork. We have continuity split by Mark Wade. I'm thinking, like, when the heck did Mark Wade write Deadpool? Because, yeah, him and Krista Priest basically write stories for this. I'm like, when the heck did these two ever write Deadpool? I guess they did because they wanted to. Yep. Now, Krista Priest has fringed. Mark Wade does, well, kind of story. So Deadpool walks into a bar. That's my Frank Terry. That's another writer I've actually met. Actually, one of three writers. I've also met Fabian C's as well. With Dexter in the artwork, there will be no honeymoon. By Famous Seas John Crystal, our artwork. And then Space Racist by the previous arcs, the previous volumes writer, Danny Way, with Colorado in the artwork. Yep. A lot of these stories are just short stories, like you have Deadpool team up with Spider Man, Wolverine, and Captain America to battle a bunch of people. And we have Gus Kubelich for a couple issues. Yeah, just a bunch of short stories. We have Deadpool, like he's in the 80s, where he interacts with Miss Marvel, where they get drunk and they receive the make out. It looks like drunkly thinking they get married. Nope. They're not married. <laughs> it turns out, nope, everybody simply was basically possessed. Yep. <laughs> we have Deadpool basically mourning the death of Copycat. Yes, in a very strange way, basically making a hand puppet of her for reasons. Yep, though it turns out she's actually alive. Yep. Yeah, it's a bunch of really good short stories in this book. I do recommend it's, it's damn good. And it's nice to see Danny Way write some stuff in here, which that's kudos for him doing that. Yeah, and then we see various women basically Deadpool has slept with over the years. Including, like, a nurse, uh... I know one of these women that actually they actually brought in the character from of all books like the Mark with the uh, Mark with the Mouth book. Yeah, she shows up here as well. Though I think she died toward the end of the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she shows up here with Headpool. Yep, it looks wicked. Basically, had Deadpool apparently marrying some other woman. Yep, all really fun stories. And yes, we have the Savage Land one. Which has the woman he from that series along with Headpool. Who is a zombie version of Deadpool from the Marvel Zombie Universe? Yep. A lot of really fun stories. And then we have 28, which simply Deadpool to Ghost Honeymoon in Tokyo of all places, yes. And they have lots of fun. Pure fun what it is. And of course I run the Sunfire because it's Japan. Like, apparently it's a requirement. If you're in Japan, you run into Sunfire. Yep. Frickin' Sunfire. Goes, okay, fine. Yep. And, yeah, really fun issue. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Not a bad issue here. Mm -hmm. And finally, well, after the flashback issue, we have the Deadpool Annual, which is basically a team up story between Deadpool and Madcap. Yeah, I don't remember when this guy first showed up in the comics. I know he predates Deadpool by about 10 years. 
I think it was the eighties first show up in. Yeah. It's him put Deadpool trying to go after various people and Mad Cow basically just interfering with him. The whole story. It's a very fun annual to read. And he also acts like the the Mad Cow acts like the blank. You might be thinking, who the heck is the blank? He's a villain who showed up way back in West Coast Avengers number two from nineteen eighty four. Yep, so fun annual. They even have this wonderful thing at the end where they actually like show up like all the characters appear on the cover for each twenty seven. Yep. All in all, really fun book. Yep. These two books are purely just fantastic. And with these two books, basically I'm down to just one trade left to go for Deadpool Volume 3. And it's the original Sentai book. Yep. So I got that and a few one-shots. And that's simply it for Gary Duggan's own. But these two books, yeah, more Gary Duggan's run done. It's just purely fantastic. I get both trades roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Damn good trades. Pure fun. I like in the case of Deadpool vs. S.H.I.E.L.D. where it sets a few strokes. The one thing that was simply a follow-up what happened, Deadpool the Gauntlet. Excuse me. Yeah. That was the whole gist of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. But not much to say with this, these two books. They're both good. Okay, so that's it for you, and it's probably going to be a for video to say. So tomorrow I expect to see, well, a review for the newest chapter for One Piece. The 1,000th chapter in the manga. Looking forward to basically reviewing that. Newest chapter in My Hero Academia. And more to love who tomorrow. And presumably in their comic corner. Maybe. At least. Okay. Here's the video. Bye.